Operation Blue Star was an Indian military operation carried out between 1 and 8 June 1984, ordered by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi to remove militant religious leader Jarnail Singh Bindranwale and his armed followers from the buildings of the Harmandir Sahib complex in Amritsar, Punjab. In July 1983, the Sikh political party Akali Dal's President Harshan Singh Langawal had invited Bindranwale to take up residence in Golden Temple complex to evade arrest. Bindranwale later on made the sacred temple complex an armory and headquarters. In the violent events leading up to the Operation Blue Star since the inception of Akali Dharm Yudh Morcha, the militants had killed 165 Hindus and Nirankaris, even 39 Sikhs opposed to Bindranwale were killed. The total number of deaths was 410 in violent incidents and riots while 1,180 people were injured. Counter intelligence reports of the Indian agencies had reported that three prominent heads of the Khalistan movement Shabeg Singh, Balbir Singh, and Amrik Singh had made at least six trips each to Pakistan between the years 1981 and 1983. Intelligence Bureau reported that weapons training was being provided at Gurdwaras in Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. Soviet intelligence agency KGB reportedly tipped off the Indian agency RA about the CIA and ISI working together on a plan for Punjab. RA from its interrogation of a Pakistani army officer received information that over a thousand trained special service group commandos of the Pakistan army had been dispatched by Pakistan into the Indian Punjab to assist Bindranwale in his fight against the government. Large number of Pakistani agents also took the smuggling routes in the Kashmir and Kutch region of Gujarat, with plans to sabotage. After the negotiations with the militants failed, on 1 June 1984, Indira Gandhi ordered the army to launch the Operation Blue Star. A variety of army units, along with paramilitary forces, surrounded the temple complex on 3 June 1984. The army used the public address systems and loudspeakers to encourage the militants to surrender. Requests were also made to the militants to allow the trapped pilgrims to come out of the temple premises, before the clash with the army. However no surrender or release of pilgrims happened till 7 p.m. on 5 June. The fighting started on 5 June with skirmishes and the battle went on for three days ending on 8 June. A cleanup operation codenamed as Operation Woodrose was also initiated throughout Punjab. The army had underestimated the firepower possessed by the militants. Militants had Chinese-made rocket-propelled grenade launchers with armor-piercing capabilities. Tanks and heavy artillery were used to attack the militants using anti-tank and machine gun fire from the heavily fortified Akal Takht. After a 24-hour firefight, the army wrested control of the temple complex. Casualty figures for the army were 83 dead and 249 injured. According to the official estimates, 1592 were apprehended and there were 493 combined militant and civilian casualties. High civilian casualties were attributed to militants using pilgrims trapped inside the temple as human shields. The military action in the temple complex was criticized by Sikhs worldwide who had interpreted it as an assault on Sikh religion. Many Sikh soldiers in the army deserted their units, several Sikhs resigned from civil administrative office and returned awards received from the Indian government. Nearly five months after the operation, on 31 October 1984, Indira Gandhi was assassinated in vengeance by her two Sikh bodyguards, Sutwant Singh and Beant Singh. Public outcry over Gandhi's death led to the killings of more than 3,000 Sikhs in the ensuing 1984 anti-Sikh riots. Golden Temple The militants were able to claim a safe haven in the most sacred place for the Sikhs due to the whole or part support received by them from the key Sikh religious leaders and institutions such as the SGPC, AISSF and Jathidar head of the Akal Takht. The support was either voluntary or forced by using violence or threat of violence. Several religious leaders who spoke against the occupation of Akal Takht were murdered by followers of Bindranwale. The Golden Temple complex afforded the militants based inside a facade of fighting a holy war. It also provided the militants access to new potential recruits from among the visitors. Several multi storied buildings were located around the Parikrama walkway around the reservoir of the temple that provided rooms and offices that were taken over by the militants. The temple complex also provided logistical advantage to the militants with easy access to food, water and communication lines. 
Further the sanctity of the Golden Temple provided protection from arrests by the security forces who preferred not to enter the temple premises so as not to hurt the religious sentiments of the Sikhs. <laughs> Jarnail Singh Bindranwale in Harmandir Sahib On 13 April 1978, the day to celebrate the birth of Khalsa, a peaceful San Nirankari convention was organized in Amritsar, with permission from the Akali state government. The practices of San Nirankaris, sect of Nirankaris was considered as heresy by the orthodox Sikhism expounded by Bindranwale. Bindranwale declared that he would not allow this convention and would go there and cut them to pieces. A procession of few hundred Sikhs led by Bindranwale and Fauja Singh of the Akan Kirtani Jatha left the Golden Temple, heading towards the Nirankari Convention. Fauja attempted to behead Nirankari chief Gurbakan Singh but was shot dead by his bodyguard, while Bindranwale escaped. In the ensuing violence, several people were killed, two of Bindranwale's followers, eleven members of the Akan Kirtani Jatha and three Nirankaris. Bindranwale's followers began keeping firearms and fortified the Gurdwara that served as the headquarter of religious centre Damdami Taksal. On 24 April 1980, the Nirankari head, Gurbakan, was murdered. Bindranwale took residence in Harmandir Sahib when he was accused of the assassination of Nirankari Gurbakan Singh. Police could not pursue him inside the Golden Temple premises for fear of hurting the religious sediments of the Sikh community. On 9 September 1981, Lala Jagat Narain, the founder editor of the newspaper Punjab Kesari, was murdered. He was viewed as a supporter of the Nirankari sect and had written several editorials that had condemned the acts of Bindranwale. Bindranwale declared that the killers of Gurbakan and Lala deserved to be rewarded. Police again suspected Bindranwale in the editor's murder and issued a warrant for his arrest. On 20 September 1981, after absconding for several days, Bindranwale surrendered to the police. His followers in order to obtain his release initiated a month-long campaign of violence. They attacked Hindus, derailed trains, and even hijacked an Air India plane. He was released on the 20th of October after Home Minister of India declared lack of evidence. Bindranwale had risen to prominence in the Sikh political circle with his policy of getting the Anandpur resolution passed, failing which he wanted to declare a separate country of Khalistan as a homeland for Sikhs. Indira Gandhi, the leader of the Akali Dal's rival Congress, considered the Anandpur Sahib resolution as a secessionist document. The government was of the view that passing of the resolution would have allowed India to be divided, making a Khalistan. Bindranwale was reportedly backed by Pakistan's ISI on his radical separatist stand, plans and operations. Bindranwale had started the efforts for his demand in 1982, and by mid-1983 had managed to gain support for his plan to divide India. ISI reportedly supported and helped him in spreading militancy in the Indian Punjab state. The arms and ammunition used by his group were provided by ISI. <inaudible> Guru Nanak Niwas In July 1982, the then president of Shiromani Akali Dal, Harshan Singh Langawal invited Bindranwale to take up residence at the Golden Temple complex to escape arrest. He called Bindranwale, Our stave to beat the government. On 19 July 1982, Bindranwale anticipating his imminent arrest took shelter with approximately 200 armed followers, in the Guru Nanak Niwa's guest house, in the precincts of the Golden Temple. Bindranwale had made Golden Temple Complex his headquarters. From here he met and was interviewed by international television crews. On 23 April 1983, the Punjab Police Deputy Inspector General A.S. Atwal was shot dead as he left the Harmandir Sahib compound by a gunman from Bindranwale's group. The following day, after the murder, Langowal claimed the involvement of Bindranwale in the murder. Reportedly, militants responsible for bombings and murders were taking shelter in some gurdwaras in Punjab. Punjab Assembly noted that the murder in the temple premises confirmed the charges that the extremists were being sheltered and given active support in religious places and the Guru Nanak Niwas. While Bindranwale was openly supporting such elements. However, the Congress-led government declared that it could not enter the Gurdwaras for the fear of hurting Sikh sentiments. After the murder of six Hindu bus passengers in October 1983, President's rule was imposed in Punjab. Topic. 
Occupation of Akal Takht During the debate in the Parliament of India members of both the houses demanded the arrest of Bindranwale. Sensing a prospect of his arrest from the hostile premises, he convinced the SGPC President Tora to set up his headquarter in Akal Takht shrine representing the temporal power of God in the Golden Temple. The temple high priest protested this move as a sacrilege since no guru or leader ever resided in Akal Takht that two on the floor above Granth Sahib but Tora agreed to Bindranwale's demand to prevent his arrest. On 15 December 1983, Bindranwale was asked to move out of Guru Nanak Niwa's house by members of the Babur Khalsa who acted with Langawal's support. Babur Khalsa had also the support of the Congress party. Langawal by now feared for his own safety. Tora then convinced the high priest to allow Bindranwale to reside in the first floor of a call talked as he had nowhere to go to avoid arrest. Bindranwale had assumed that the sacredness of the shrine would provide him immunity from arrest. Bindranwale claimed that he had to move to Akal Takht as Morcha dictator Langawal was negotiating with the government for his arrest. By December 1983, Bindranwale and his followers had made the Golden Temple complex an armory and headquarter for extremist activities. Few leaders raised their voice against Bindranwale in the Golden Temple and other gurudwaras across the state. Among the prominent ones was Jiani Partap Singh, an 80-year-old spiritual leader and a former Jathidar of the Akal Takht. Partap had openly criticized Bindranwale for stocking arms and ammunition in the Akal Takht. Bindranwale's occupation of the Akal Takht was called an act of sacrilege. Partap was shot dead at his home in Tali Chowk. Other dissenters were also killed. They included Harbans Singh Manchanda, the Delhi Sikh Gurudwara Management Committee President, Niranjan Singh, the Granthi of Gurudwara Tut Sahib, Granthi Jarnail Singh of Valtoha and Granthi Surat Singh of Majauli. All those who spoke against Bindranwale were perceived as his enemies who in turn were branded as enemies of the Sikh faith. Bindranwale's group were killing the Sikhs who had been speaking against Bindranwale and the idea of Khalistan. The Sikh religious leadership had heard and understood the message being spread and they had already succumbed to their fear. Topic negotiations In January 1984, India's Secret Service Research and Analysis Wing prepared a covert plan codenamed Operation Sundown involving special forces to abduct Bindranwale from the Golden Temple complex. A RA unit was formed to rehearse Operation Sundown in the Sarsawa Air Force Base in Uttar Pradesh. But the operation never materialized due to Indira Gandhi's rejection. It would have caused numerous casualties as collateral damage, the Golden Temple being one of the most visited sites in Punjab. It would have also hurt the religious sentiments of the Sikhs. Other options such as negotiations were opted for instead. The government sent a team led by Narasimha Rao to try to convince Bindranwale to back out but he was adamant. The negotiations failed and the law and order situation in Punjab continued to deteriorate. Indira Gandhi tried to persuade the Akalis to support her in the arrest of Bindranwale peacefully. These talks ended up being futile. During the days before the assault, government representatives met with Bindranwale in a last-ditch effort to negotiate a truce. Bindranwale warned of a backlash by the Sikh community in the event of an armed assault on the Golden Temple. On 26 May, Tora informed the government that he had failed to convince Bindranwale for a peaceful resolution of the crisis and that Bindranwale was no longer under anyone's control. Faced with imminent army action and with the foremost Sikh political organization, Shiromani Akali Dal, headed by Harshan Singh Langowal, abandoning him, Bindranwale declared, This bird is alone. There are many hunters after it. In his final interview to Subhash Kirpakar, Bindranwale stated that Sikhs can neither live in India nor with India. Indira Gandhi then gave her permission to initiate Operation Blue Star on the recommendation of Army Chief Arun Sridhar Vaidya. She was apparently led to believe and had assumed that Operation Blue Star would not involve any civilian casualties. The assumption was that when confronted, Bindranwale would surrender to the army. Preparations Fortification of Golden Temple The violence rose to its peak in the months before Operation Blue Star and the Golden Temple was allegedly being defiled with weapons. An arsenal had been created within the Akal Takht over a period of several months. 
Trucks engaged for Kar Siva religious service and bringing in supplies for the daily langar were smuggling in guns and ammunition. The police never attempted to check these vehicles entering the Golden Temple, reportedly on instructions from superiors. During a random check one such truck was stopped and a large number of Sten guns and ammunition were found. Later on after the Operation Blue Star it was found that the militants had set up a grenade manufacturing facility, and a workshop for the fabrication of Sten guns inside the temple complex. Harmandir Sahib compound and some of the surrounding houses were fortified under the guidance of Major General Shabeg Singh who had joined Bindranwale's group after dismissal from army. During their occupation of a call talked, Bindranwale's group had imitated fortifying the building which had allegedly disfigured the Akal talked. The statesman reported that light machine guns and semi-automatic rifles were known to have been brought into the compound, and strategically placed to defend an armed assault on the complex. The modern weapons found inside the temple complex later indicated that foreign elements were involved. The heavier weapons were found with the Pakistan or Chinese markings on them, holes were smashed through the marble walls of a call talk to create gun positions. Walls were broken to allow entry points from the basements in the Takht and from the rooms around the Parikrama, to the tiled courtyards. Secured machine gun nests were made. Each of these positions were protected by sandbags and newly made brick walls. The windows and arches of Akal Takht were blocked with bricks and sandbags. Sandbags were placed on the turrets. The entire Akal Takht had been converted into a large reinforced pillbox with weapons pointing all the directions. Every strategically significant building of the temple complex, apart from the Harmandir Sahib located at its very center had been fortified in a similar manner and allegedly defaced. The fortifications also included 17 private houses in the residential area near the temple. All the high-rise buildings and towers near the temple complex were occupied. The militants manning these vantage points were in wireless contact with Shabeg Singh in a call talked. Under the military leadership of the cashiered Major General Shabeg Singh, ex-army veterans and deserters had provided weapons training to Bindranwale's men in the temple complex. Young Sikhs were occupying firing positions in the shrine and the buildings on all sides of a call talk. The militants in the complex were anticipating an attack by the government troops. The defenses in the complex were created with a purpose of holding out long enough to provoke an uprising among Sikhs in the villages so that they march en masse towards the Golden Temple in support of the militants. Sufficient food that would have lasted a month was stocked in the complex. During this period, police and the security forces stationed around the temple complex were allowed only beyond a sanitized area of more than 200 yards. This was to avoid the desecration of the temple by their presence. The security forces were prevented by the politicians to take actions in enforcing the law. Even self-defense from the militants was made difficult. On February 14, 1984, a police post near the entrance of the temple was attacked by a group of militants. Six fully armed policemen were captured and taken inside. After 24 hours the police responded and sent in a senior police officer for negotiation. He asked Bindranwale in the Akal Talk to release his men and return their weapons. Bindranwale agreed only to return the corpse of one of the policemen who had been killed. Later the remaining five policemen who were still alive were also released, but their weapons, including three Sten guns, and a wireless set, were not returned. The fortifications of the temple denied army the possibility of commando operation. The buildings were close by and had labyrinthine passages all under the control of the militants. Militants in the temple premises had access to Langar's food supplies and water from the Sarovar temple pond. Militants were well stocked with weapons and ammunitions. Any siege under these circumstances would have been long and difficult. The option of laying over a long siege was ruled out by the army due to the risk of emotionally aroused villagers marching to the temple and clashing with the army. The negotiated settlement had already been rejected by Bindranwale and the only option left to the government was to raid the temple. Topic. Rise in militant incidents On 12 May 1984, Ramesh Chander, son of Lala Jagat Narain and editor of media house Hind Samachar Group was also murdered by the militants of Bindranwale. In addition, seven editors and seven news hawkers and newsagents were also killed in a planned attack on the freedom of media house to cripple it financially. 
Punjab police had to provide protection to the entire distribution staff and scenes of armed policemen escorting news hawkers on their morning rounds became common. Bindranwale used vituperative language in his speeches against the Hindus. In order to solve the Hindu Sikh problem, Bindranwale exhorted every Sikh to kill 32 Hindus. Bindranwale had injuncted young Sikhs to buy motorcycles and weapons to attack enemies of Sikhs, and many young Sikhs followed this. The terror had spread to all of the countryside. The numbers of violent incidents were increasing every month. It was 9 in September 1983, in October it increased to 36 and in May 1984 there were more than 50 violent incidents. These incidents included bank robberies, attack on police, arson at railway stations, bombings, indiscriminate shootings and killing of Hindu bus passengers forcibly taken out of the bus. In the 22 months since the launching of the Akali Dharm Yudh Morcha till June 1984, Bindranwale's militants had already killed 165 Hindus and Nirankaris per the official figures. Militants had also killed 39 Sikhs due to their opposition to Bindranwale. The total number of deaths was 410 in violent incidents and riots while 1,180 people were injured. By April 1984, it appeared as if Bindranwale would be successful in driving away the Hindus from Punjab to Haryana and other states due to the terror of violent attacks and riots. There were intelligence reports of interception of messages from Bindranwale and Shabeg Singh to their followers in the state asking them to start a fierce movement of mass killings of Hindus on 5 June. According to Amarjit Kaur, Bindranwale wanted to start a civil war between the Hindus and Sikhs. Meanwhile, the killing rate had been rising all over the state, with sometimes more than a dozen killings in a day. On 2 June in the last 24 hours before the announcement of the operation 23 people were killed, in June 1984, the army was called out to help the civil administration in Punjab in response to a request from the Punjab governor, B. D. Pan, in view of the escalating violence by terrorists in Punjab, on 2 June Operation Blue Star had been initiated to flush out the militants from the Golden Temple. Khalistan Certain radical groups had already started the movement to drive out Hindus from certain areas to make way for Sikhs coming in from other states. Due to the increased incidence of religious violence, exchange of population had already started in Punjab. The Sikhs from other states were moving into Punjab and the Punjabi Hindus were moving to neighboring states in increasing numbers. New Khalistani currency was being printed and distributed. By May 1984, the declaration of independence of Khalistan was imminent. Pakistan had been supporting the militants with arms and money. Once Khalistan would have got declared, there was the risk of Pakistan recognizing the new country and sending Pakistani army into Indian Punjab to guarantee its security. <laughs> Operation Operation Blue Star was launched to remove Jarnail Singh Bindranwale and his followers who had sought cover in the Amritsar Harmandir Sahib complex. On 3 June, a 36-hour curfew was imposed on the state of Punjab with all methods of communication and public travel suspended. The electricity supply was also interrupted, creating a total blackout and cutting off the state from the rest of the world. Complete media censorship was enforced. The army stormed Harmandir Sahib on the night of the 5th of June under the command of Kuldeep Singh Brar. The forces had full control of Harmandir Sahib by the morning of the 7th of June. There were casualties among the army, civilians, and militants. Sikh leaders Bindranwale and Shabeg Singh were killed in the operation. Topic: <laughs> Generals. The armed Sikhs within the Harmandir Sahib were led by Bindranwale, former Maj. Gen. Shabeg Singh and Amrik Singh the president of the All India Sikh Students Federation from Damdami Taksal. General Arun Sridhar Vaidya as the chief of the Indian Army. General Vaidya, assisted by Lt. Gen. Sundar Ji as vice chief, planned and coordinated Operation Blue Star. From the Indian Army Lt. Gen. Kuldeep Singh Brar had command of the action, operating under General Krishnaswami Sundarji. Brar was in charge of an infantry division at Meerut. On 31 May Lt. Gen. K. S. Brar had been summoned from Meerut and asked to lead the operation to remove the militants from the temple. 
Brar was a Jat Sikh, same caste as Bindranwale and had his ancestral village a few miles from Bindranwale's village. Brar was also acquainted with Shabeg Singh as his student at the Indian Military Academy at Dehradun. Both of them had worked together in the Bangladesh operations. Among the six generals leading the operation, four were Sikhs. The army operation was further subdivided along two subcategories Operation Medal, to take out the militants, including Bindranwale, from the Golden Temple complex. Brar's 9 Infantry Division was deputed for this. Operation Shop, to raid extremist hideouts throughout the Punjab state and to mop up the militants remaining in the countryside. In addition, another critical Operation Woodrose was done, under which the army units were deployed in the border areas, replacing the pickets routinely held by the paramilitary BSF. The border pickets held by at least a company strength. The 1st of June At 12.40 hours the CRPF and BSF started firing at Guru Ram Das Langar building. The Border Security Force and the Central Reserve Police Force, under orders of the Army, started firing upon the complex, in which at least eight people died. The 2nd of June The army had already sealed the international border from Kashmir to Ganga Nagar, Rajasthan. At least seven divisions of army were deployed in villages of Punjab. Army began taking control of the city of Amritsar from the paramilitary. A young Sikh officer posing as a pilgrim was sent to the temple for scouting. He spent an hour in the complex noting the defense preparations in the complex. Plans were made to clear the vantage points outside the complex which were occupied by the militants, before the assault. Patrols were also sent to study these locations, by nightfall media and the press were gagged and rail, road and air services in Punjab were suspended. Foreigners and NRI's entry was also banned. General Gauri Shankar was appointed as the security advisor to the governor of Punjab. The water and electricity supply was cut off. The 3rd of June In the morning the curfew was relaxed to allow the Sikh pilgrims to go inside the temple to celebrate Sikhism's fifth Guru Arjan's Martyrdom Day who died in the early 17th century. Around 200 young Sikhs were allowed to escape from the temple premises during this period. Most of whom were criminals and left-wing extremists Naxalites. In the night the curfew was re-imposed with the army and paramilitary patrolling all of Punjab. The army sealed off all routes of ingress and exit around the temple complex. The 4th of June On 4 and 5 June announcements were broadcast over loudspeakers and the pilgrims inside were asked to leave the temple. The army started bombarding the historic Ramgaria Bunga, the water tank, and other fortified positions. The army used Ordnance QF-25 Pounder and destroyed the outer defenses laid by Shabeg Singh. The army then placed tanks and APCs on the road separating the Guru Nanak Niwas building. The army helicopters spotted the massive movements, and General K. Sunderji sent tanks and APCs to meet them. The artillery and small arms firing stopped for a while, and Gurcharan Singh Tora, former head of SGPC, was sent to negotiate with Bindranwale for his surrender. He was, however, unsuccessful and the firing resumed. The 5th of June In the morning, shelling started on the building inside the Harmandir Sahib complex. The 9th Division launched a frontal attack on the Akal Takht, although it was unable to secure the building. The Golden Temple complex had honeycombed tunnel structures. The army was kept under withering machine gun fire from the manholes of the tunnels. The militants would pop out of the manholes and fire machine guns and then disappear back into the tunnels. 1900 hours. The BSF and CRPF attacked Hotel Temple View and Brahm Buddha Akara respectively on the southwest fringes of the complex. By 2200 hours, both the structures were under their control. The army simultaneously attacked various other gurdwaras. Sources mention either 42 or 74 locations, 2200 to 730 hours. Late in the evening, the generals decided to launch a simultaneous attack from three sides. 
Ten guards, one para commandos and Special Frontier Force SFF would attack from the main entrance of the complex, and 26 Madras and 9 Kumaon battalions from the hostile complex side entrance from the south. The objective of the Ten Guards was to secure the northern wing of the temple complex and draw attention away from SFF who were to secure the western wing of the complex and one para commandos who were to gain a foothold in Akal Takht and in Harmandir Sahab, with the help of divers. 26 Madras was tasked with securing the southern and the eastern complexes, and the 9 Kumaon Regiment with SGPC Building and Guru Ramdas Sarai. 12 Bihar was charged with providing a cordon and fire support to the other regiments by neutralizing enemy positions under their observance. An initial attempt by the commandos to gain a foothold at Dershani Diori failed as they came under devastating fire, after which several further attempts were made with varying degrees of success. Eventually, other teams managed to reach Dershani Diori, a building north of the Nishan Sahib, and started to fire at the Akal Takath and a red building towards its left, so that the SFF troops could get closer to the Dershani Diori and fire gas canisters at Akal Takath. The canisters bounced off the building and affected the troops instead. Meanwhile, 26 Madras and 9 Garhwal rifles reserve troops had come under heavy fire from the Langar rooftop, Guru Ramdas Sarai, and the buildings in the vicinity. Moreover, they took a lot of time in forcing open the heavy southern gate, which had to be shot open with tank fire. This delay caused a lot of casualties among the Indian troops fighting inside the complex. Three tanks and an APC had entered the complex. Crawling was impossible as Shabeg Singh had placed light machine guns 9 or 10 inches above the ground. The attempt caused many casualties among the Indian troops. A third attempt to gain the pool was made by a squad of 200 commandos. On the southern side, the Madras and Garhwal battalions were not able to make it to the pavement around the pool because they were engaged by positions on the southern side. Despite the mounting casualties, General Sunderji ordered a fourth assault by the commandos. This time, the Madras battalion was reinforced with two more companies of the 7th Garhwal Rifles under the command of General Kuldip Singh Brar. However, the Madras and Garhwal troops under Brigadier A. K. Dewan once again failed to move towards the Parikarma, the pavement around the pool. Brigadier Dewan reported heavy casualties and requested more reinforcements. General Brar sent two companies of 15 Kumaon Regiment. This resulted in yet more heavy casualties, forcing Brigadier Dewan to request tank support. As one APC inched closer to the Akal Takath it was hit with an anti-tank RPG, which immediately immobilized it. Brar also requested tank support. The tanks received the clearance to fire their main guns 105mm high explosive squash head shells only at around 7.30 am. The 6th of June Vijayanta tanks shelled the Akal Takht. It suffered some damage but the structure was still standing. The commanders in charge of the operation were shocked by this discovery that militants in Akal Takhts had two Chinese-made rocket-propelled grenade launchers with armor-piercing capabilities. The 7th of June The army entered the Akal Takht. Dead bodies of Bindranwale, Shabeg Singh and Amrik Singh were discovered in the building. The army gained effective control of the Harmandir Sahib complex. Topic: 8 to 10 June. The army fought about 4 Sikhs hold up in basement of a tower. A colonel of the commandos was shot dead by an LMG burst while trying to force his way into the basement. By the afternoon of the 10th of June, the operation was over. Topic: <inaudible> Casualties. <inaudible> the Indian Army placed total casualties at Sikh militants and civilians: 493 dead. Military: 83 killed, 4 officers, 79 soldiers, and 236 wounded. Unofficial casualty figures were higher. Bindranwale and large number of his militants were killed. There were high civilian casualties as well, since militants used pilgrims trapped inside the temple as human shields. The pilgrims were not allowed by the militants to escape from the temple premises in spite of relaxation in the curfew hours by the security forces. 
The militants hoped the presence of thousands of pilgrims inside the temple premises would prevent action by the army. Aftermath President Zail Singh visited the temple premises after the operation. While making the round, he was shot at by a sniper from one of the buildings that the army had not yet cleared. The bullet hit the arm of an army colonel accompanying the president. The operation also led to the assassination of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi on 31 October 1984 by two of her Sikh bodyguards as an act of vengeance, triggering the 1984 anti Sikh riots. The widespread killing of Sikhs, principally in the national capital Delhi but also in other major cities in North India, led to major divisions between the Sikh community and the Indian government. The army withdrew from Harmandir Sahib later in 1984 under pressure from Sikh demands. The 1985 bombing of Air India Flight 182 is thought to have been a revenge action. General Arun Sridhar Vaidya, the chief of army staff at the time of Operation Blue Star, was assassinated in 1986 in Pune by two Sikhs, Harjinder Singh Jinda and Sukhdev Singh Sukha. Both were sentenced to death, and hanged on 7 October 1992. In March 1986, Sikh militants again occupied and continued to use the temple compound which necessitated another police action known as Operation Black Thunder on the 1st of May 1986. Indian paramilitary police entered the temple and arrested 200 militants that had occupied Harmandir Sahib for more than 3 months. On the 2nd of May 1986, the paramilitary police undertook a 12-hour operation to take control of Harmandir Sahib at Amritsar from several hundred militants, but almost all the major radical leaders managed to escape. In June 1990, the Indian government ordered the area surrounding the temple to be vacated by local residents in order to prevent militants' activity around the temple. Topic Mutinies by Sikh soldiers In the aftermath of the Operation Blue Star, cases of mutinies by Sikh soldiers, mostly raw recruits, were reported from different places. On 7 June, 600 soldiers of the 9th Battalion of the Sikh Regiment, almost the entire other rank's strength, mutinied in Sri Ganganagar. While some managed to escape to Pakistan, most were rounded up by men of Rajputana rifles. The largest mutiny took place in Sikh Regimental Center at Ramgarh in Bihar where recruits for the Sikh Regiment are trained. There, 1461 soldiers 1050 of them raw recruits, stormed the armory, killing one officer and injuring two before they set out for Amritsar. The leaders of the mutiny divided the troops into two groups just outside of Banaras to avoid a rumored roadblock. One half was engaged by army artillery at Shakteshgar railway station. Those who managed to escape were rounded up by 21st Mechanized Infantry Regiment. The other half engaged with the artillery and troops of 20th Infantry Brigade, during which 35 soldiers both sides were killed. There were five more smaller mutinies in different parts of India. In total 55 mutineers were killed and 2,606 were captured alive. The captured mutineers were court-martialed, despite efforts by various groups including retired Sikh officers to get them reinstated. In August 1985, 900 of the 2,606 mutineers were rehabilitated by the central government as part of the Rajiv Langawal Accord. Long-term effects. The long-term results of the operation included Defeat of the ISI-backed secessionist Khalistan movement Reduction in militancy in the Indian state of Punjab Ensuring that the Golden Temple remains free from violence and weapons stockpiling Criticisms <coughs> 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 The operation has been criticized on several grounds including, the government's choice of timing for the attack, the heavy casualties, the loss of property, and allegations of human rights violations. <laughs> timing Operation Blue Star was planned on a Sikh religious day. The martyrdom day of Guru Aryan Dev, the founder of the Harmandir Sahib. Sikhs from all over the world visit the temple on this day. 
Many Sikhs view the timing an attack by the army as an attempt to inflict maximum casualties on Sikhs and demoralize them, and the government is in turn blamed for the inflated number of civilian casualties by choosing to attack on that day. Additionally, Longowal had announced a statewide civil disobedience movement that would launch on 3 June 1984. Participants planned to block the flow of grain out of Punjab and refuse to pay land revenue, water, and electricity bills. The government justified the timing, stating that the mission to arrest Bindranwale could not be delayed any more as he was going to be more aggressive in his approach towards killings of Hindus. Bindranwale was about to launch a fierce movement planned to murder Hindus in all the villages across Punjab. Plans included killings of all Congress MPs and MLAs on 5 June. According to Amarjit Kaur, Bindranwale wanted to start a civil war between the Hindus and Sikhs. Before the Operation Blue Star started, there was already a rise in the killings of Hindus and 23 people were killed in the final 24 hours before the announcement of the operation. The spate in killings confirmed the doubts of the government which then decided that the operation had to be initiated soon. When asked about why the army entered the temple premises just after Guru Aryan Dev's martyrdom day when the number of devotees is much higher, General Brar said that it was just a coincidence an army had only had three to four days to complete the operation. Based on the intelligence sources Bindranwale was planning to declare Khalistan an independent country any moment with support from Pakistan. Khalistani currency had already been distributed. This declaration would have increased chances of Punjab police and security personnel siding with Bindranwale. The army waited for the surrender of militants on the night of June 5 but the surrender did not happen. The operation had to be completed before dawn. Otherwise, exaggerated messages of army besieging the temple would have attracted mobs from nearby villages to the temple premises. The army could not have fired upon these civilians. More importantly, Pakistan would have come in the picture, declaring its support for Khalistan. He described the operation as traumatic and painful, but necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Media censorship Before the attack by the army, a media blackout was imposed in Punjab. The Times reporter Michael Hamlin reported that journalists were picked up from their hotels at 5 a.m. in a military bus, taken to the adjoining border of the state of Haryana and were abandoned there. The main towns in Punjab were put under curfew, transportation was banned, a news blackout was imposed, and Punjab was cut off from the outside world. A group of journalists who later tried to drive into Punjab were stopped at the road block at Punjab border and were threatened with being shot if they proceeded. Indian nationals who worked with the foreign media also were banned from the area. The press criticized these actions by government as an obvious attempt to attack the temple without the eyes of the foreign press on them. The media blackout throughout Punjab resulted in spread of rumors. The only available source of information during the period was All India Radio and the Doordarshan Channel. Topic: <laughs> Human Rights. Sikh militants The militants used pilgrims trapped inside the temple as human shields, to prevent the attack by the army. The civilians were prevented from leaving the complex during the ease in curfew. This led to large number of civilian deaths. On 6 June, a group of some 350 people, including Longawal and Tora surrendered to the army near the Guru Nanak Niwas. To prevent their surrender to the security forces the militants opened fire and hurled grenades on the group. Seventy people were killed in this firing, including thirty women and five children. Gurcharan Singh, secretary of the Akali Dal and a prominent member of the Longawal faction, was also killed. Two junior commissioned officers of the army were captured by the militants during the fight and were subjected to torture and then murdered. The Miltons skinned one of them alive, strapped explosives onto his body, and blew him up while throwing him from the upper floor of the Akal Takht. On June 8, 1984, an unarmed army doctor who had entered a basement to treat some civilian casualties was abducted by the militants and was hacked to death. <inaudible> <inaudible> Indian Army Brahma Chelaini, the Associated Press's South Asia correspondent, was the only foreign reporter who managed to stay on in Amritsar despite the media blackout. 
His dispatches, filed by Telex, provided the first non-governmental news reports on the bloody operation in Amritsar. His first dispatch, front-paged by the New York Times, the Times of London and The Guardian, reported a death toll about twice of what authorities had admitted. According to the dispatch, about 780 militants and civilians and 400 troops had perished in fierce gun battles. Chelaney reported that about 8 to 10 men suspected Sikh militants had been shot with their hands tied. In that dispatch, Mr. Chelaney interviewed a doctor who said he had been picked up by the army and forced to conduct postmortems despite the fact he had never done any postmortem examination before. In reaction to the dispatch, the Indian government charged Chelaney with violating Punjab press censorship, two counts of fanning sectarian hatred and trouble, and later with sedition, calling his report baseless and disputing his casualty figures. The Supreme Court of India ordered Chelaney to cooperate with Amritsar police, who interrogated him concerning his report and sources. Chelaney declined to reveal his source, citing journalistic ethics and the constitutional guarantee of freedom of the press. In September 1985 charges against Chelaney were dropped. The Associated Press stood by the accuracy of the reports and figures, which were "...supported by Indian and other press accounts." Similar accusations of high-handedness by the Army and allegations of human rights violations by security forces in Operation Blue Star and subsequent military operations in Punjab have been leveled by Justice V. M. Tarkunde, Mary Ann Weaver, human rights lawyer Ram Narayan Kumar, and anthropologists Cynthia Mahmood and Joyce Pettigrew. The Indian Army responded to this criticism by stating that they answered the call of duty as disciplined, loyal and dedicated members of the armed forces of India, our loyalties are to the nation, the armed forces to which we belong, the uniforms we wear and to the troops we command. <laughs> <laughs> Strategy Five years later, the Army's strategy was criticized by comparing it with the blockade approach taken by KPS Gill in Operation Black Thunder, when Sikh militants had again taken over the temple complex. It was said that Operation Blue Star could have been averted by using similar blockade tactics. The Army responded by stating that, "...no comparison is possible between the two situations," as there was no cult figure like Bindranwale to idolize, and no professional military general like Shabeg Singh to provide military leadership. And, the confidence of militants having been shattered by Operation Blue Star. Furthermore, it was pointed out that the separatists in the temple were armed with machine guns, anti tank missiles, and Chinese made armor piercing rocket launchers, and that they strongly resisted the army's attempts to dislodge them from the shrine, appearing to have planned for a long standoff, having arranged for water to be supplied from wells within the temple compound and had stocked food provisions that could have lasted months. <laughs> Honors to the soldiers The soldiers and generals involved in the operation were presented with gallantry awards, honours, decoration strips and promotions by the Indian President Zail Singh, a Sikh, in a ceremony conducted on 10 July 1985. The act was criticised by authors and activists such as Harjinder Singh Dilgir, who accused the troops of human rights violations during the operation. <laughs> Alleged British involvement. The United Kingdom's Thatcher government was reportedly aware of the Indian government's intention to storm the temple, and had provided an SAS officer to advise the Indian authorities. This and other assistance was reportedly intended to safeguard the UK's arms sales to India. Relevant UK government records have been censored. <laughs> Published accounts Topic. Documentaries Operation Blue Star and the Assassination of Indira Gandhi 2013 is a TV documentary which premiered on ABP News Channel series, Pradhanmantri. This documentary, directed by Puneet Sharma and narrated by Shikhar Kapur, showed the circumstances preceding the Operation Blue Star and the events that occurred during it including the aftermath. See also 
Siege of Mecca Siege of Lal Masjid Waco Siege August 2013 Rabaa Massacre